Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode number 33 of The Clint Cronin Show. Today's guest, John Jock Machado. That is the seventh degree Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu master corral belt instructor to guys like Chuck Norris, Joe Rogan, Eddie Bravo, you know, the 10th Planet guy. I'm not trying to name drop, but kind of am. I'm really stoked about this one. It's been about a year in the making that I've been bugging John Jock to do the show, and I finally was able to get the job done. I woke up bright and early in Las Vegas, Nevada. I said, yeah, I said Las Vegas, right? And the show was in Los Angeles. So what happened was I woke up in Las Vegas and drove clear across the desert on a Monday morning to the Tarzana Academy to make it in time for a four o'clock podcast with John Jacques Machado. Well, it doesn't sound that bad. If you look it up, you know, it should be a four hour drive, right? Wrong. Monday morning, tons of construction on the 15, among other places along the way. I made it there with about 30 minutes to spare. Now, you might be thinking, how did I get up in Las Vegas following St. Patrick's Day weekend, doing two shows, training every day, and my birthday was St. Patrick's Day, which is the 17th, so thanks for all the happy birthday messages I received through social media and everything. But back to the point at hand, how did I make it across the desert in time and actually perform and have a good show with John Jock Machado? Well, I use Azith, right? Check this out. Azith is a nootropic supplement. You want to increase your memory? You want to increase your focus, your creativity, need more energy. You spend way too much time on YouTube, on uh, Facebook, on the Instagram, huh? You wasting all that time. Don't you wish you had more time in the day? Don't you wish there was more than 24 hours in the day? Well, you need to get some of that time back. You need to get your ass in gear. You need to focus. You need to focus by taking Azith. It's a nootropic supplement. It's there to increase cognitive function. It's there to make you more productive. There's no caffeine in it, but make no mistake. This stuff will wake you up. It is not stimulant free. Now, I can't lie, there was a very noticeable difference while taking Azith. I noticed I was a lot more efficient at work. I'm not getting distracted. I'm not randomly browsing the internet. And I'm rarely even checking my phone. I'm just getting tasks done. I'm getting things done that need to be done. Now, getting things done, this is a huge thing, right? Executing, actually going out there and getting the work done, going out there and getting the task at hand complete. For me, it was going from Las Vegas to Los Angeles, getting done with the John Jock Machado podcast. And as soon as I'm done, putting that gi on and going and rolling with some of the best guys the world has to offer at that Tarzana John Jock Machado Academy. And I'm very excited to say that it happened. I did it. And seeking Azith, S-E-E-K-I-N-G-A-Z-O-T-H.com is what helped me do it. That nootropic supplement, it really kicks ass. It's the real deal. It wouldn't be on here if it wasn't. I'm not a sellout, guys. I use this stuff myself. Some of my friends, uh, they, they also use it as well. It's, it's been helping us out quite a bit. So uh, if you use the coupon code or the promo code CRONIN, C-R-O-N-I-N, at checkout, as a friend of mine, don't tell nobody, but you're going to get 15% off of this stuff. 15% off. That's savings. That's money back. You're going to get time back because you're going to be so much more efficient. You're going to be so much more creative. You're going to have focus because you're taking Azith. You're seeking Azith with me. So S-E-E-K-I-N-G-A-Z-O-T-H dot com. Promo code Cronin, C-R-O-N-I-N, because I'm Clint Cronin, at checkout and you'll get 15% off. Seek Azith with me and be more creative, be more efficient and kick more ass. Now, to the business at hand, John Jock Machado, right here on the Clint Cronin Show. Without further ado, thank you for listening. And welcome to the show. We're here in Tarzana, California with Master Jean Jacques Machado. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's a great pleasure. And let's have a great talk. Absolutely. You got a beautiful academy here. I'm looking around and I see some very cool posters and uh, I think a kimono over here which is signed by Sheikh Tahnoum wow yeah it's uh, if, you, if you're involved in martial arts you probably know who he is and uh, it's a great friend and uh, someone who actually helps so much the sports of Jiu Jitsu grow as you can see Abu Dhabi Grand Slam all over the world I mean he's pushing and uh, being very helpful very friendly it's great that's a uh, in a way, an honor to have his gear signing hanging over here. Oh, absolutely. I mean, to a lot of people, the uh, ADCC, this is the, the real world championship because of the qualifiers that you have to go through to be invited and everything. So, Yeah, and I think it's, um, if you go back a little bit, a few years ago, because of he did the event that he did the, in Abu Dhabi, uh, with the starting point for a lot of people to see that promoting the sport the way he did 
we will get as far. And I'm so happy today because I have so many options, so many events involving jiu-jitsu around the world. I mean, any, almost every country, major country that likes jiu-jitsu is having some event. You go to Russia, go all over Europe, you go back to Brazil, United States, I mean, Australia, everywhere you look and you have some big, big tournaments because the way he started, the way he did the Abu Dhabi. Oh, and how far it's come since then. I mean, everything from, you know, big improvements in IBJJF over the last few years. I think a, a lot of people are pretty critical of the rules. I, I think they have improved uh, some things, you know, and you can obviously be gamed, but even all systems can. I'm a big fan of what Eddie Bravo is doing with EBI. Yeah, and then you, you see the, it's kind of a branch out. So many options now for Gi, no Gi. Uh, evidently, everybody tried their best in terms of improving the rules. Sometimes worked out fantastic, sometimes doesn't do as well, but you have options. You know what I mean? I think it's anyone that complain out there, instead of complaining, go start doing something and make the change or just be a part of it and enjoy and uh, learn how to deal with. But I think we have many different organizations today and they're all trying to shape the rules the best way they can to favor more and more the most technical jiu-jitsu fighter. Oh, absolutely. Um, very interesting. I, I hadn't attended a Naga event in a while. Um, we had one in San Jose uh, where I live um, about three weeks ago and they, I think, had 12 mats going at the same time and I've never seen jiu-jitsu uh, matches just sort of handled so uh, quickly or I, I, I could say efficiently because they were moving through people like very fast but the only thing that I didn't really like was the space between mats was zero so you had people like spilling over into the other mats but it seemed like this thing is the one tournament I've seen where it stuck to the schedule like it, it was in, it was on time in a way when those things happen the space on the mat this is a, a good sign that the uh, normal arenas out there, does, they don't have the capacity now to actually feed the amount of people that wants to be involved in the tournament. We're talking about thousands. I <laughs> mean, not long ago, we have 200 competitors. It's, sure. wow, it's unbelievable competition. Now we have a few thousand. And I think it's the arena now is kind of a not fit the size for the amount of people there. It's a good problem. That's not a bad problem. It's a good problem. We have to find a bigger space to make sure we fit everybody. Oh, exactly. I, I saw some of the crowds. I, I, I was unfortunately unable. I was uh, I was in Las Vegas uh, doing some of these shows. Uh, I didn't get to make it to Pans this year, but uh, I, I saw some of the pictures of the crowds, and it, it was a pretty <laughs> big turnout in terms of competitors and uh, the, the crowd actually watching as well. Yeah, I think it's um, every day from regardless the belt, from white to black. Um, wasn't a day that you look around, you see empty seats was basically sold out, I would say. If I'm not wrong, they have around 3,000 competitors all those days. Again, ABJJ, their master's now running on time and everybody's very happy, excited. It's kind of a marathon. But uh, yes, it was very successful in terms of people participating, uh, athletes from all, all over the world. And the crowd was very into some fights over there. They're almost jumping on the mat, screaming. It was a, it was a good weekend. It was pretty good for the jiu-jitsu community. I saw uh, some of your uh, some of your black belts did did very well. I know uh, Eric Acha from PSD, uh, who's been a guest on the show before. He uh, he competed. I think this is his first tournament as black belt. Um, Jay Zabalas, your 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 main guy at the Malibu Academy. Yes, uh, he placed silver in his division black belt. And uh, Eric Medina, uh, I think he. I'm not sure. I know he won one match. I'm not sure where he took he second. Took se okay, another yeah. silver medal. Man, his performance at EBI against Barrett Yoshida. I was glued to my uh, TV set watching this. Man, you had to be really proud of this guy. I, th I think we have um, a gr good group of people training here at the school. Um, everybody very humble. Everybody very dedicated. 
And I think it's a teamwork. Everyone here is like, they know when they go there and do well, it's a group or their partner, training partner. They come to the school definitely very happy. Um, and sometimes some of my students, I always mention them that sometimes they, they don't have any idea of how good they are because they train every day here and sometimes they have the same partners, but everybody's such a good level and the competition is some, something that they can test themselves and get that feeling. Uh, I wasn't surprised when Eric fought uh, Yoshida. I told him that he has all the tools and the techniques to actually come out as a winner. Even though he did not win, after I saw the fight, he's a winner for me. For oh, his for performance, sure. I think uh, a lot of people were surprised. And I told him, and even himself, like, oh, my God, I didn't know. It's like, see, now you guys are understand what I'm trying to explain. You guys are much better than you think you are. Uh, I, for his size, regardless of his size, I rolled with him right before I got my black belt. And um, I, I wasn't at all surprised to see how well he did. I, I, I wasn't really aware of Barrett's uh, current level, but seeing that he brought the fight to him and seeing that he had him, he had he finished the fight in a, we had, with a head and arm choke on him, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, it was... Uh... <laughs> Almost we can say safe by the bell. Uh, that's what. That's how it looked. I mean, he was the aggressor. Um, he he was uh, he was he was good. I mean, he looked like he belonged there at, oh, at, at the top top level. It was amazing. Definitely, and um, and I was mentioning my students that when they go to the tournament, and oh, all the guys here, I know they have the potential to be among the top three guys. Um, it's takes me some time to convince them, but more and more they, they become aware of. They now see the results. Every tournament that they go, they are on the top three, which is a fantastic feeling for me. And uh, and I have no doubt all those guys, they are, they're really into to that path to be for a few years to come. I was on the top of the food chain. I think they, I have some very good guys here, very good guys helping each other in training, the dedication. And I'm very, very happy. Very, very happy f for all of them. And evidently, I'm very happy for myself, too, to see the result of years and years of training. And uh, it's literally paying off big time. Oh, absolutely. You mentioned years and years of training. And this journey literally began for you as a really young kid. Were, were you something like five when you got into jiu-jitsu or something like this? Yeah, it, 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 in the case of my family, I was uh, a privilege to born in the family that I that I born. Uh, we are five brothers, the Machado brothers, which is a small clan inside of the Gracie clan. My mother's sister, my aunt, was married to Carlos Grace Senior, which make our link into the um, Gracie family, which in uh, for us is. We grew up not that uh, we have option or we choose. No, it's just we felt so natural to start grapple and train with people. And uh, we see your brothers, your cousins, everybody doing fantastic and something that we love. And we learn how to love jiu-jitsu. And uh, I'm pretty much sure jiu-jitsu love us back. Oh, absolutely. You've got a... Uh an amazing uh culture and uh you know a academy that you've you've sort of cultivated from that uh you know family that you know you your your clan as you call it is has grown so much over the years i mean you're like the one of the most respected uh, instructors in the country obviously um you've got had guys from uh you know the eddie bravo and joe rogan come through and um i think i remember seeing you on what was it the walker texas ranger when i was uh, oh chuck norris yeah chuck norris he you guys so he was a student as well yeah he was um i think in the in the early 90s he was the main reason that uh we stay in america and then he was a very very helpful person he still be our close friends who basically introduced us to martial arts in America and around the world. And he pushed and he said, man, I want to learn this. I want my karate organization to learn jiu-jitsu. I think it's, you guys have something that the world needs to know. And 
through the years, evidently, we were able to form and have a lot of our students become very successful in different areas, but some of them specifically in what we do, jiu-jitsu. And we have celebrities that came along, and evidently Joe Hogan is, I don't think you can say UFC without him, in a way, because his voice is, becomes like a trademark on the UFC because he knows what he's talking about. He knows when you see the fight and he's saying something, he really knows what he's saying, which sometimes is not always like that when you have somebody on the microphone watching the fight. You have Eddie Bravo, which uh, did the impossible, defeat Hoyle Grace in a, in a match, which is something that nobody believed. Eddie did, and uh, he did in a great fashion. He did twice, in a way, to make sure that um, he's not lucky. He's dedicated and uh, a very great fighter, and you see how how far he's going with his organization. And uh, still very close friend, great student, great friend. Um, we talk weekly basis, get on the phone. Sometimes you don't see each other, but we talk to each other, make sure he's all right. He always calls me to see if I need anything, if I'm all right. And uh, it is, I think it's, it's just the beginning of the growth of what we do. Oh, absolutely. I got to spend one evening over at uh, the 10th Planet headquarters the last time I was here in town. And um, the one thing I can say for sure about Eddie Bravo is that he loves jujitsu. Uh, just watching him teach, uh, being a part of one of his classes, going through, I hadn't done much nogi and I don't, I don't know anything or I didn't know anything about the 10th Planet system except what, you know, a move here and there that someone would bring across to the academy or uh, I think... Um, one of his uh, black belts from San Francisco showed me one or two things, but I'd never had the opportunity to take one of his classes. But I think the class began at 8 p.m. or something, and he was on the mat until probably almost 11 p.m., involved, teaching, showing, okay, just change this little detail, working with each and every student. Whereas you can go to some academies and the teacher will say, okay, start running, text on their phone, and then they kind of zone out. And as much as you don't want to say that that does exist, it does. But um, above all else, uh, you know, Eddie Bravo loves what he does. His system is very unique. Um, I enjoyed meeting he, him. He had a good instructor. I, I heard. I heard somewhere <laughs> that I think it was that Machado. He, he, follows, he follows that guideline. I mean, basically, is, I do care about my student. I do care about anybody that walking into my school. I feel so pleased that someone walking in and I want to train jiu-jitsu at your school with you. And I have to give this person and make sure that he will get what he's looking for. Not only that, he will get more than what he's looking for. There's a lot of people walking in, they don't know their potential. And I want to make sure they see that. And Eddie's been a student since the beginning from zero and he knows every class, how the structure go, how much you should. I always pay attention to the student. I always be kind and make sure you improve your student. His improvement is your success. That's how I see. Better my student gets, better I have to get. It's a daily learning process for both of us, instructor and student. And again, I'm very happy and again, not surprised at all with all his success. And, uh, and he's just keep growing. And I'm very, very happy to be part of that growth, to be able to see that whole transformation and, and move. But yeah, he had a good school. I, I, <laughs> I think I heard that somewhere. Yeah, he's, uh, I, I can imagine, you know, when he first came in, you know, and he's in Los Angeles, he's like this rock and roll guy. I mean, but uh, it, it's obvious he, was, he must have been obsessed with jujitsu to, uh, to, to take if, to it. Like if I'm has. wrong, his first passion is music. And um, he put aside music and jiu-jitsu, and I think he's still working today parallel. Um, I heard that he's much better jiu-jitsu guy than a musician, <laughs> but I told him never give up because uh, a lot of people tell you, I don't like this, it's not good, but they said that before about your jiu-jitsu and uh, look how far you, you come. And it's the same thing with the music. And he's going to get there and uh, fulfill all his, his dreams, his passions. But I'm sure the jiu-jitsu is being a huge 
base for his life in general. Oh well, yeah, he's he's got a huge following now, and he's like uh, turning into this kind of uh, not just MMA, but almost like a pop culture type guy. Uh, him and Joe Rogan both. I mean, Joe has changed radio. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm sure he's. Uh, if I'm not wrong, I read in an article he's. Uh, he was on the top ten podcasts around the world. Oh, easily. I mean, around the world. It's not just here. Easily, easily. And if you have a chance to follow uh, the people that he definitely interviewed there, is uh, amazing people. And again, he's. It's in a way changing and open the door for all of us that Absolutely. want to go and do the podcast because he's he's doing a fantastic job and he's a real martial artist. Oh, absolutely! I think last <laughs> few weeks ago he had Neil deGrasse Tyson, his particle physicist, one of the leading minds in the world, on his show. And you know, this comes a long way from hosting a show like Fear Factor, and then oh. you know Taekwondo, and you hear him speak, and he's, he's very, very, very well read. He's very intelligent. Um, he's extremely, uh, extremely intelligent guy. I when I met him was, um, I think he was doing a TV show, if I'm not wrong, news radio, yeah. and I think that show just ended up finishing, not because of him or anything, just I think the main actor died. Yeah, Tom Tom Arnold, right? Yes, yes. And uh, no 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 it was um, uh, um anyways it's I forgot I forgot the guy's name, but uh, it was the main guy on the show. Phil Hartman? Phil Hartman, I'm yes, sorry. Yes, uh, yes. I confused yeah, these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sucks, I'm sorry. But Phil then Hartman. and I remember was when he was training for me and uh, I remember he got his blue belt he had a Taekwondo background, came from Boston, but he was already stand-up comedian, successful at that time. Then he started Fear Factor. Yep. And Fear Factor, who knew, just became a fever around the whole world. Then from being successful, he became very successful. Um, I don't recall how he got involved with the UFC, but uh, he started becoming a UFC voice in... Uh, since then, he's just now, if he was big back then, I don't know, he's huge in today's time. And the radio, the podcast is something that he loves to do. Oh, he's, and each show is, he does, the, so my shows are an hour. His are at least three hours oh, it's, each. Oh, has no, no time. He I just mean, keeps he going. He goes until he gets what needs to be get. It, they're they're all very immersive he's able to um he's able to do something so uh in 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 the u.s uh, obviously like howard stern was the big talk radio guy like he knocked every record out of the you know out of the water or whatever he was the he's the biggest guy but then he moved to satellite radio and it people aren't i mean you paid ten dollars for it whatever but I think Joe is like passing this in terms of the number of people that he, he gets downloading yeah, a show. I think he's, even then, he's the technology yeah. that makes so easy, so accessible. Um, evidently, the people that he brings in the show, um, the knowledge that he has, I mean, he talks to anybody that goes there in the same level, regardless what ranking people have or, or their background. He's just talking and having very interesting conversation and uh making sure us as an audience we we get the idea and understand the interview yeah, it's 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 very knowledgeable very knowledgeable it's it's very cool as a listener when you do have the the host that goes out of their way to you know actually do the research and understand you know who is the guest uh how am i going to get the most out of this time um i and he's not afraid to ask questions that oh, no. may That's... be controversial, but you know some some of these guys they go yeah. out of their way to be provocative just to do it. But I feel like Joe is kind of I think he does a lot of these people justice that normally wouldn't. Oh yeah, no, definitely. He, he he's a. Uh, I mean, that's why he's one of the most successful. He's able to to make the person that be interviewed feel great to be there talk about whatever they want and he has his questions many people probably wants to ask those questions and he's right there he he has it there's it's kind of a phenomenon uh, about his show the the businesses and the technologies he talks about on that show they have a tangible uh you know business impact so they do cryo chamber therapy yes. everywhere Half of the people that come into the the place that I go to in California, oh, they, in uh, Northern it's because California, of him. they say because of Joe Rogan experience. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, as his... And he's providing a great service sure. for um, lots of people. And, I mean, a lot of people, they learn so much and listen to the show, and I think it's something that more people should do. It's, it's like you're going to school, in a way. It is, um, <laughs> be because you, you go in there and say, well, I know this guy from MMA or jiu-jitsu, but you come away learning about uh, particle physics or, uh, you know, this the one guy is... Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, he, he works with the dinosaur bones. What's the uh... man? I mean, you have all kinds of uh, diversify so much the people that go to his show from comedians to physicians in a way that's like man, it's so diversifying the aspect of learning in general from from fighters to athletes. And I remember not long ago, uh, Lance Armstrong was there, and yeah. all those. And they're all happy to be there because they feel that they said what they want to say. No, we'd say no uh, editing or anything. Just what they say, the people get it right there. The, the Lance Armstrong interview, I was, yeah. I was sitting there shocked listening to it. Because when you know, you know, a few years ago, and with all the the controversy behind him, I never in a million years would have thought that he would be on the Joe Rogan Experience, being very open about all of this stuff. And and I heard uh, not long ago, I think he he was the best interview he ever gave to explain himself was at Joe Rogan Show. I said I heard that, uh, and I think it was in a hard son. He's saying that to hard son. I said no hard son, don't get me wrong, but. I went to opera to say something. I wish I went to Joe Hogan because it was much better interview and I could explain myself extremely well. Yeah. And I, I, you see, and someone who was interviewing such a very hard topic were able to be happy to talking about and as <laughs> if Joe, that, that says a lot, man. I, I don't think the Oprah interview did him any favors, honestly. No. no. I, I don't think that was good for his career. No. In many ways, but, uh, you know, the, sometimes the truth will do that. But. I mean, truth hurts sometimes, but it has to be said and uh, we move on. And who's perfect in this world? No, it's no one's perfect. I don't know. No one's undefeated at life, right? No, no, man. <laughs> it's a constantly learning. Uh, we make decisions and make choices and, uh, Sometimes the choice turns out to be not the best one or not the right one, but the time we say. So, oh, yeah, I, I am regularly wrong, normally wrong, but it's good because I could look and try to fix it the next day and hopefully then we not. we learn. Yeah, that's how we learn. I Never. Tr try not to mess up twice the same way. <laughs> If I can, I, I usually get pretty obsessed about when I make a mistake, like trying to figure out, like learn everything about it, you know, but that's in, in jujitsu, it's not so easy. There's a, a, a hundred thousand ways to get choked and <laughs> you still have arms and legs to worry about. But you, you got to decide and then the choice and it's very similar to life situations. That's why I try to use jujitsu as a foundation for most of my decisions in life and uh, the same thing with my students some of the guys i have a great talk and uh, one of the guys that won the tournament he's going through a tough time on his life and i said man if we use the same effort you just did to win this tournament on your life i have no doubt you're going to achieve the goal that you have and as uh, soon as the tournament is over, we had that conversation. I already spoke to him this morning. He's all driving towards his goal. He's going to make it happen. He never thought he would win that Pan Americans, and he won because he put the effort, he put the time, the dedication, and he said, man, now get this whole energy and put what you want in your life. And uh, he already started. He said, then I finished the tournament. I went home, and I started doing my homework, and and I have no doubt he's going to achieve that goal. Because yeah, it's anyone. If you put so much into and uh, focus on what you want, oh, you make it happen. You make it happen. Each one of us, if you look back a few years, like, man, did I ever imagine Jiu-Jitsu get this big from late the 90s until today? If I never believed, I would stop halfway. No, I said, no, it will. We're moving forward. And today Jiu-Jitsu provides for millions of people around the planet. Absolutely. All the, the, the businesses that come out of it and derive from it. I, and I think the message, the, such a positive message, I think is the main thing for all the people that practice jiu-jitsu. 
get involved in such a positive environment. You learn so much and you fall down, you get up, you get choked, then you choke someone, then you learn how to defend the choke. You've always been put in a adversity situation daily. You struggle, but you come out alive. It's like, oh man. And not every day we're happy. Sometimes life trying to choke us and uh, we survive and get out, use the techniques and we move on. I feel like this is the last honest profession because no matter how you feel in your mind, no matter how, what you say about what you are or who you are, when you're on your mat, on the mat, your performance is your performance. Your level is your level. People have good days and bad days, but it comes I, out. I got to say that um, in jiu-jitsu, I can't lie to my student. I can't go to him and say, hey, man, you're doing great. But when he comes to train, the train is not great. It's no lie in jiu-jitsu. It's just, you're okay, you're doing, you, get, you can improve, and you have to train more. But I can't say, oh, you're doing great, fantastic, but that does not translate on his performance. That's one of the things I like in jiu-jitsu is no lie. Or you learn you're getting good, or you're learning to get even better, but it's no lie. I would never lie to you, oh, your armbar is great, and you train if anybody else, you never do the armbar. I mean, it's constantly learning, you're going to get there. Some people get there fast, some people get there on their own time, but everybody's going to get to their finish line. But it's no lie. That's one of the great things. You're yes. good, you're good, you're not good, you're learning to be good. Yeah, I, the, the one thing I noticed, I, the minute I got my black belt, it was like, okay, I got to work now. I, I I can't sit here. I can't say, okay, just everybody else work. No, like I immediately competed. I've gone to every seminar that came through my town. I'm traveling to train everywhere. I trained on my birthday on just this past Friday because the minute... Oh, happy birthday, man. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it, 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 they, they, they were talking because I was in Las Vegas and everybody's like, oh, partying. This. No, I have a podcast to do. And I had one hour to, to spare beforehand. So I, I went over to uh, Sergio Pena. And yes, I, yes. I trained there and just, you know, learned a little bit. It was hot. So, you know. And he, yeah, he's, he's one of the pioneers back in Brazil. Sergio, yeah, definitely. I think it was... Uh, Hicks who most would say famous fight was against him, Sergio Pena. Yeah, he was, he was, it was a great battle. It was very friendly, very humble. It's just like I, I don't sell patches, t shirts, just sell jujitsu and you know, it's you know, thank me for coming, gave me a t shirt on my way out. I said, Oh man, thank you. That's it's very, very good experience. I was a little bit sore on Saturday, but, <laughs> but it's, it's a good sore. Absolutely. Feel like uh, I like to feel like I earn the next meal or the shower. Every, you know? every belt is a new beginning. For sure, we never end learning. I never thought I would get a coral belt, and suddenly I got a coral belt. It's like, oh, it's not over. It's just a new beginning. It's a new way for me to look at and see my students and even myself. But I know we're still in process to learning. I don't train to get a belt. I train to learn every day and get better. Yeah, and if I have a master, a mentor, they reward me with, which was something that I never expect. It's kind of a shock to reality for me, something that I never expect, but suddenly you achieve that. And give me that, it's a new beginning. Now I have to get better. And we learn that we can always get better. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I see things all the, all the time that, oh, I... I had never thought of it that way or just, and I, I've learned, I, I think the more I train and th the older I get is there's more and than or in life. There is more like, oh, also, and, and this, and this, as opposed to or, like there are less things that are just like black and white. And because there's so many ways to do the same thing, there's so many ways to do this choke or this to to arrive at the end goal. And I, I feel like my mind is open more as I've progressed. It, it, I think it's as the time, let's see, jiu-jitsu, more we train, more I get into certain situations in controlling someone, more I make the better choice on that situation. And I, I believe the same thing in life. Older I get, more experience. I've been around longer, then the chances for you to make good choices are higher than making a bad choice. Because the experience, how you learn, how you lived, and um, same thing in jiu-jitsu. The more you train, better choice you're going to make for, 
for your game, for your survival, for your finish. And life is the same thing. The more I live, better choice I make for my life. Uh, hopefully. It, it, living the jiu-jitsu way. There you <laughs> go. Uh, constantly. It's oh. nothing guaranteed, but that's... The, the percentage-wise is I have more chances to make good choices today than I had a few years back. I feel like by having <laughs> this jujitsu as the foundation, we're taught to always want to improve position, not to be complacent, and to always try to improve things, to be more efficient, to use the technique. And yeah, when applying this to life, for sure. And I, I, I always, for me, the to, to, to make a show like this, it's to be able to share what jujitsu has done for my life. Um, and even if it isn't saying, you know, for someone out there to go and make a podcast, like I'm not expecting everyone to love what I do, but if they can look and say, okay, this is a guy who's working in IT for this many years, but he finds this other thing that makes them very happy. And then but, you pursue this. But passion. you believe in what you do. With full. There we go, with, man. With my there entire we go. heart. Nothing, I, nothing will stop you. Absolutely. Nothing. If you believe, you love what you do, the results of that is magical. I, I feel like the passion is like nine-tenths of it. And one of the great things is doing what you like to do, how many good people you met along the way, how many people you actually have a chance to, to have a chat with and uh, get to the source of a lot of people, some great people out there, and be able to, to share that experience with the whole audience out there, which would like to be in your position, ask those questions and to have that talk. It's a great thing, man. You're doing a fantastic service for our jiu-jitsu community, which uh, we do need more people doing what you do. I don't know if they like to do what you do <laughs> or they believe in what you do, but uh, for what I hear, you're doing a great job, definitely. Yes. The show is being something that I have a chance to to, to listen to feel of them and it's very... It's like an enri enrichment of uh, the jiu -jitsu, for the jiu-jitsu community. Oh, man. Well, I really appreciate you saying that. Uh, it means a lot coming from the, the, the source of most of uh, where all this stuff started, man. <laughs> You've um, gone back a little bit. So is this the first academy you opened here in the United States? Or um, Our first academy was opened in um, 1988. It was uh, actually in um, our garage in Redondo Beach. Oh, wow. And it was a time that evidently we did not have that technology that we have today, but we have the passion of for what we do. And we believed. And from the garage, we one day have a chance to, through one of our students, which I think he was a very close friend of Chuck Norris, and uh, it's funny, one day, and... His friend brought Chuck Norris and <laughs> they knocked the door, opened the doors like, excuse me. <laughs> oh, this is me, but it's my friend Chuck Norris. I want to train today. And it's like, what? It's such a surreal picture, still my mind, because you grew up watching some of the movies of someone, the action movies, and suddenly you have that someone walking and knock at your door to learn jiu-jitsu from you. It's like, hmm. It's a message or something, and evidently we welcome him in. And uh, Chuck became a very good friend of uh, our brother, the Machado brothers, and uh, he made possible. And he was the one that actually opened uh, our first school outside our house in Encino. I think it was a uh, 1989. That uh, year, six two months later, he he used to own the shopping center. It was his building. Um, I remember he called us, hey, I want to talk to you guys. I want to have a meeting with you guys. And uh, we drove, and uh, when we get to his house, he said, oh, come over here, let me show you something around. Then we go to this building. Oh, I just bought this location, this nice building, and uh, this is your guys' new school. Then we're walking in, you have the mats, you have everything ready, and they're like, well, excuse me? And that, that's all I want is just train, but I don't want to drive to Redondo Beach. You guys drive here now to the valley. <laughs> Everything started at that point. And um, I remember back then was um, when we did the grand opening, which I have a video that I'm going to release very soon on the internet. Excellent. The grand opening of our first school. And uh, 
he was there doing the demonstration on the middle of the shopping center. And I remember we have back then the LA Times, Sunday LA Times, I think was back when newspaper used to be a newspaper because we had no other way to find news. And uh, we have hundreds of people that show up to see that. And especially the, in, the, in the 90s, late 80s and 90s, Chuck was the, one of the biggest stars in America. I mean, he could not walk on the street without people want to hug him. <laughs> And suddenly we are with him, and he made all that possible happening. That's why the reason we have our school in that side of town is because of him. And um, and after a few years training here, he moved back to Dallas. He took one of my brothers with him, my older brother, Carlos. And uh, that's why we have a school in Dallas, because of Chuck Norris also. He didn't want to stop training. He said, I don't know who, but some of you guys got to move with me to Texas because I can't stop training jiu-jitsu. Then we just following that, and now we have uh, several schools everywhere. And, uh, but he was the, the guy who really put the flag and uh, make sure all his karate organization get involved in training jiu-jitsu with us and uh, spread the word. Every talk show that he's been to, and say, hey, what have you been doing to be such a good shape? I train jiu-jitsu with the Machado brothers. And it's like, it's the next day you go back to school, you have a few people line up at your door, and they're like, oh, excuse me, oh, I want to start training jiu-jitsu because Chuck Norris trains jiu-jitsu. And definitely we, we owe him a lot in that aspect of, really from his heart. He really had the passion for jiu-jitsu, and he still trains jiu-jitsu. But that was great. I think it was... Um, because of him, also, Jiu-Jitsu was able to, to grow in America, to get into the point that became a UFC. Yep. And now you tell me where <laughs> you can find a place that does not have Jiu-Jitsu. It and it's uh, very, very challenging. I think it's a... I, th I think uh, once we go and colonize Mars or, you know, put a thing on the moon, I think it'll be a race to see oh, I'm sure they're the going to have jujitsu there too. I have no doubt. Zero gravity. This will be 10th planet for sure. Yeah, like the literal got, In another planet. planet. They will definitely. But they will have some kind of uh, grappling happening. I, I think uh, Eddie should have the claim to the first on the, the real 10th planet, right? You know, <laughs> or ninth. I'm sure know. he will, man. If you see his posts. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I enjoy his Instagram very much, man. You, you guys have like a, a secret language over here. I'm trying to decipher now with the emojis. You're like very, very technical with the texting. I, I think in Instagram, it's something nice. It's evident the people that like your pictures and all of these, you want to like the pictures back. And, and sometimes I'm improving so much on my English then... And sometimes time-wise, I want to like the most and go there and thumbs up and okay. I just want to make sure that person sees that I care about the picture. I care about their post and with something positive that please keep keep doing that. And uh, I know for a lot of people how important that is to for you to like their picture and all that, that whole oh, thing yeah. that happening on Instagram. And oh, you don't follow me, you follow me. <laughs> and I follow you from my heart regardless of Instagram. I mean... I want all, all my friends and all the people definitely that are involved in Jiu-Jitsu to. My success is, for me, is also related to my friends and my students' success. Their sure. success makes me successful. And that's how I keep pushing. And every day, the Instagram, the emojis, yeah, I like the fist. <laughs> I'm always a fist up or thumbs up and uh, to make sure they, they know I was there looking to their picture. Yeah, this is like uh, your signature <laughs> thing now. Like some people have like a very distinct autograph, you know, when they sign a paper. Like yours is definitely the the fist and the thumbs up emoji. This is like very uh, like a signature Jean Jacques Machado thing, <laughs> for sure. But sometimes I write, right? Yeah, occasionally the the, the majority it's emoji. Like I, I think you guys at one, can. At one time you mentioned to me, and I I write down it's like, hey, not only emoji, but the emoji for you. <laughs> It, it, just, it just made me laugh. I was like, because it almost like you tell a little story with it. There was a few different ones, and I'm like, what's he saying? Oh, okay, okay, I get it, I get it. And I, I'm not sure the meaning of some of them. I know it's a good meaning, but yeah. again, I want to make sure that people know that I was looking to them, reading what they wrote, and uh, it means a lot to me. I know also how much it means to the person. 
Oh yeah, for sure. And I, I know there's a, you have a, a lot of fans out there and, you know, followers all over the world that, uh, your, your teaching, your jujitsu is impacted and it's so many people. So it's, it's a very powerful thing. So that you take the time to look at it. I'm, I'm, I was very happy. Oh man, he, he put the thumbs up. Me and Dave are looking at our phones like, ah, oh, you like the picture. So for sure, man. <laughs> it's, it's, um, I think today and I, every day when you go to some of the tournaments and people approach you and hey, I want to take a picture, I want to say hi, thank you. Um, yeah, it, it, it makes you feel really good because um, something that you love to do and create a, such a great and positive impact on so many people's lives. Sometimes we have no, I do have an idea, but sometimes you don't have an idea how far that actually goes how much transformation happened in people's life that you don't even imagine. And it makes you feel great. I mean, boy, something that I like to do, I would do it regardless. People might have a bad day and suddenly they see a picture of something that you wrote or a technique that you post or a fight that you did and make a, a very positive impact on these people. It's something that is priceless. And... We do what we do because we know someone out there, life will be changed in a good way because they see something that you did. It's something, I mean, it's translate exactly what Jiu-Jitsu means to me and uh, what Jiu-Jitsu means to a lot of people that I'm involved with. And that's what we're here for. I want to make sure that everybody that walking into the Jiu-Jitsu community have a change on their life for better. And never met anybody who's not doing jiu-jitsu. They're not healthier. They're not happier. Their life did never that their, their life turned around for such a great way. They made their best friends. They met sometimes their wives and best friends. Everything related to their community of jiu-jitsu. Because we have a way to see life in a a little bit different than people that are not trained jiu-jitsu, be involved in jiu-jitsu see. We believe in ourselves. We're very confident in what we do. And we know that if we pass that to other people, everyone's life will be better. And we know we have a huge followers in the jiu-jitsu community that they're making their lives off jiu-jitsu. They're able to pass jiu-jitsu on. And everyone has some, such a great change on their lives, which is... It's an amazing feeling for me to see that transformation happening in few years. We're talking about 20 years, not, not, not much more than that. It's an amazing thing that we have just in this small space without even trying, without having to say anything out loud about it. We have an environment where we are immune to difference between people that causes war, fights, uh, it, 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 like every difference in religion and politics, in any of these things in race, anything where anyone would have any problem or difference outside of the gym, in the gym, this is Man, evaporates. I, I, no, have, it doesn't exist. I have people here from every country. For sure. Every country. And no one here is better than anybody. I mean, that's why we have the gear on. This way already, put the gear on, we look all the same, basically. Yeah. And the translations, your jiu-jitsu, you train, you do better than him now, you're helping him out. But it's something that is, is definite, a different place, which everybody gets along, everybody respects each other. Man, we're choking on by each other every <laughs> class. But after the train, he still shake his hand and hug him. Say, man, thank you. It's great. Nice to see you. See you tomorrow. I, I don't know much about other sports or the culture behind the scenes and any of the other things, but I know for sure what we have in jiu-jitsu is special. Um, it's, it's unique as far as I know. And uh, we're immune to all the things, all the negativity in the world. There's nothing but positivity in here. And, the, and I believe any time that you have the ability to help someone, make someone feel better, or to be positive, it's it's an obligation, and this we, is free here. We have, uh, I will give an example. Sometimes I have students that come to your school, and in their daily life, their work environment, nobody even notice or even know their name. He goes there, do his job very lonely, and basically feels that nobody cares about him. Maybe he goes home and 
His family is busy. Everybody's working. It's like a lonely person. He walks into the school. And in my school, I know the name of every student that I have. And all the students know each other's name. When he approached here, just the fact that somebody approached him, shake his hand. Hey, how are you doing? How's your day? And Michael, you're okay? And he feels alive. And we know, and I tell my students how important it is to compliment someone, say hi, how's your day, be polite, do care about the other. And that changed this person's life. He comes to the school here, not even just for jiu-jitsu anymore. He's like, man, I want to go there to feel good. And we make sure everybody that comes here feels great. We choke you, we unbar you, we footlock you, we squeeze you. You leave the school happy. I don't have any student that leave the training, regardless how the training went, that are not smiling. They had such a great time, such a great conversation. They feel alive. Next day, they're back again. And those are a few of examples that you can get in jiu-jitsu school that create such an impact in people's life. Like sort of propagating that culture and reinforcing these values as the leader of this clan, of this, uh, this academy, of this group of academies, is it's key. Um, so everything is going to start, the culture is going to start with what the instructor puts out there and you, you set an amazing example for your students for your affiliate gyms for your other black belts and so it's it's very commendable um I, I i don't know that all gyms are like this i know uh that that some are many are and uh, i hope that more take this example to heart I, I hope more people hear this that are going and uh you know training all the time and realize that it's more than just tapping people and feeling better at the end of the day because you had a hard day at work that your your training partners matter um it's not just like weights you throw on the ground you know it, it's if you, if you can make someone feel better you should i uh, i i tell my students that i actually not only and i say i never learned jujitsu I lived jiu-jitsu. I grew up in a house that I go and I see Carlos Gracie Sr. talking to Helio Gracie. I mean, you have the two. Then suddenly Carson Gracie walks in. I mean, you have all the originals, the first generation of the family, right in front of your eyes. Then you listen to their conversation, to their advice, to their view of life, to their view of fights. I mean, then you go to the academy. You look at one corner, you have Hickson Grace. You look to another corner, you have Holly Grace. You look to another corner, you have Hansel Grace. You look to another corner, you have Carlinhos Grace. You have Helium Grace. I mean, you have Higa Machado. You have Carlos Machado. Man, how are you not going to get good? Or how, what a privilege to grow up and born with all these amazing people and amazing fighters and not to get good or not to learn. And, and every time we go out, I mean, that's the people you, you hang out with, going out here and there. In every conversation, it has some learning process. Today, the world see that. Man, I grew up with that. That's why sometimes in some schools, they don't have that kind of environment. I don't, I don't blame the instructor. Unfortunately, he did not have that opportunity, the privilege that some of people in my generation had to live that moment that the turmoil of the jiu-jitsu in a good way, in a challenged way, you see some of the fights on the street, have to fight on the street sometimes. But I think every generation has and had that contribution for all of us to get where we are today. But it's something that, man, that, that's how I learned how to teach jiu-jitsu. And that's how I grew up and lived with all these <laughs> monsters, amazing fighters, samurais. I mean, everyone's a warrior. You train and oh, I'm getting good. Okay, train it. That, oh, I'm not that good yet. Then you go, oh, I'm not that good yet. I mean, it's a daily testing, proving yourself and, and learn. But you have all this source to be able to pick everyone's brain and, and learn. That's why it's a, what I do today is a translation of what I lived my whole life in jiu-jitsu. You, you mentioned the 
growing up and the street fights happening and all this stuff and that jujitsu at its roots is a martial art and with the popularity now of the youtube and competition and very fancy techniques and moves um where do you weigh um in terms of the self-defense the martial art aspect versus the the competition the the sport aspect i mean what weight would you put on one do you base your jujitsu more on one than the other i, I think he's um the past two generations or two and a half generations of uh, jiu-jitsu instructors, they born in a time of jiu-jitsu tournaments, which, which is fantastic. But that's the time they born with. A lot of the jiu-jitsu is specific towards tournament, which is nothing wrong with that. My generation, in the prior generation, they never had a jiu-jitsu tournament. I remember used to have maybe one or two a year. I mean, we can't base our training in one or two tournaments, jiu-jitsu tournaments a year. And it was in that time that the Vale Tudo back in Brazil is still alive. I mean, we learned literally jiu-jitsu to how to defend ourselves. It's not that one is better or worse, it's just different routes. The principle of jiu-jitsu is still there. Evidently, when you want to go and you have a confrontation with someone, evidently some of the techniques we do in the sport of jiu-jitsu, we should not apply in a real fight with someone. It's a two different routes, and I think is regardless if you're learning the jiu-jitsu tournament, which is fantastic. I teach a lot of my students, and I, I learn too. I compete a lot too. And you have to be involved and do it. But at the same time, you have to have the basic principles of jiu-jitsu to make sure that's the reason most of us learn jiu-jitsu, to defend ourselves, to be self-confident. And somebody hold me in a headlock, I should know how to get out. And because of the competitions, not many people sometimes pay attention on that aspect of jiu-jitsu because they don't want. They just want to go into their route which their school was born and based off jiu-jitsu tournament. Jiu-jitsu is out there for anyone to learn. I think is the competition today. Um, the, the people involved with jiu-jitsu are now a lot better shape than the time that we were. They emphasize such an unbelievable nutrition and fitness and all of this, which is great. Our time, we have the Gracie diet that we... I still do today. I eat it, my papaya, my fruits. I don't eat meat, very rare. It's my fish, my chicken, but it's very, not restrict, but just natural as much as possible. And we're always in good shape. I mean, we grew up and we learned that it stay healthy. If I have my biceps big, doesn't mean I'm healthy. We learned mm -hmm. that we don't get sick. I'm very rare. Some of my family members get sick. Because we learned that we need to go to the school. And then our mentality back then is if you sign up for a fight or a tournament, even if you're sick, your name is out there. You have to go. Sure. Sick or not, you got to show up. And that's our mindset. That we want to make sure we're always healthy to show up on the fights or tournaments that we have to do. Um, some of the students come to me and they try to learn some techniques which became very fitness oriented. Not everybody can actually do the technique. Mm. When I learned jiu-jitsu my generation is, I want to make sure that everybody can learn the jiu-jitsu that I learned. The competition jiu-jitsu, not everybody can do some of the techniques mm. some of the top guys do. Good for them very challenge for a lot of people to be able to execute some of the techniques that are out there. But uh, yes, you have two different routes, which they should be working together. I learned how to escape on a headlock, and I learned how to do some very fast moves and moves that I can apply in the tournament. But should not be, oh, I don't want to learn self-defense at all, I just want to go and do the tournament. I think that my one day, sooner or later, he might find a reason like, hey, wait a minute. Somebody hold me in a headlock and I have to go back here to learn this whole foundation of jiu-jitsu. 
which is important if the way you see jiu-jitsu is, is like a building solid my foundation is the highest the building can rise weak the foundation i cannot go too high on that aspect and i think we see a, a little bit i think the competition is fantastic it it, it, it spreads jiu-jitsu even more but a lot of people there you can't forget to learn some f fundamentals of jiu-jitsu to make them even better for whatever direction they want to take I, I agree completely. I, I feel like lately I had been wanting, I, I had been attending some striking classes. Just one of, one of my, I, I teach a 6.30 a.m. class and one of my students, he's, uh, he's also a student of Claudio Franza yes, up in yes. uh, Santa Cruz. Yes. But with his, the, the guy's work schedule, he, you know, 6.30 in the morning, he can make my class and still go to Claudio. Yes, so yes. he's been a boxing instructor for like 20 years or something. So uh, we've been trading like jujitsu privates for striking. And for me, just having the perspective, okay, if I can, I, I'm now more comfortable getting hit. So now, okay, now I understand movement more on my feet as it, like, where's the range, that sort of thing. And it also opened my eyes to some things like a lot of guys that don't get takedowns or aren't able to connect with throws, they wind up looking at the floor like they're afraid of getting hit. They're afraid of the impact. They're okay on the ground. They're okay yes, engaging yes. this way. But the actual confrontation, the, the fear of the unknown, a lot of people just freeze up and just look at the floor. And I noticed I was even doing it. I'm like, okay, wait, now. So now like going in and actually learning some striking, like I, I did boxing and kickboxing a long time ago, but having jujitsu over here and striking on the other side of the mat, if I was in a striking class, I don't want to see people rolling. I want to go roll. I want to go do jujitsu. So I thought, okay, when I get my blue belt, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to striking. No problem. And then I said it again, a purple, brown, and now finally a black, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to learn this stuff a little bit because I figured out as a black belt, I should be able to defend myself and I should really be able to teach it very well. Oh, yeah, uh, but I feel like there's so much emphasis I, now on. I think I think a lot of, and especially today with the mixed martial arts. Evidently, a lot of those fighters they have a foundation style, or wrestling, or boxing, or muay thai, jiu jitsu, and evidently you have to know what to do standing, sure. and you should know what to do um, on the ground. I think is, and I believe that a lot of the successful guys doing mixed martial arts, they have a strong foundation in whichever style they come from. And they were able to find on their game, when do they mix? What I mean is a lot of jiu-jitsu guys, they're good jiu-jitsu guys, they suddenly became boxers. And they end up, losing their fights in the boxing game. It's the fine tune that when should I box more or less? And I give an example, Damian Meyer. He's not the greatest boxer, but if you go to the ground with him, wow, you're in trouble. But he was able to find that tune of how far I box or how, how I'm using this to get into the situation that I can take you to the ground. The same thing with some stand-up guys. They're good stand up. They're okay on the ground, but they find the right tune not to let the fight go to the ground. All those guys they find, but they need to have a solid foundation. They need to be doing for many years that style to have that as a base. And learning a little bit here, a little bit there is the challenge is when I'm doing too much boxing and less grappling or when I'm doing too much grappling and less boxing. The ones that find the right, right in the middle, able to mix that, are the most successful ones. You see, you can see the guys that are winning. They're the ones that find on their foundation their strongest, and they're able to find the halfway to use this more, to use this less. The ones that done everything, that little bit of everything, the fast as they come, the fast as they go. Yeah, it's 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 not the same thing like the boxer versus the grappler anymore. The the game is so much different. It's evolved. It it, it change it change a lot in a way of uh, you have to to have a chance for the tighter shot. You have to surround yourself with uh, all aspects of the fight. 
Well, it's looking like it's time for the students to make their triumphant return from the pens this past weekend. Um, Jean-Jacques Machado, it has been an honor uh, to have you on. And I know it's, I've been bugging you for a long time to, to be able to come and do this, but uh, I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, I know everybody listening out there is uh, really excited to, for this one as well. Um, so thank you very much, man, man. It was my pleasure. And, um Apologize to take so long for us to have that nice conversation. Looking forward, looking forward to have more of those in the future. Um, and thank you for the great job you've been doing for our community in general. And uh, if you're out there and uh, listen to us over here and you're not training jiu-jitsu today or not training tomorrow, make sure you visit the gym and try out. Definitely jiu-jitsu, you make your life a lot better, definitely. Thanks, and uh, it was a great pleasure for me to be here talking to you guys. Oh, thanks, guys, and um, remember, go train, be good to each other, and um, yep, if you're in an area that, uh, if you're in L.A., you definitely have to come to the Tarzana Academy or Malibu, uh, Dallas, there's a Machado Academy as well. I mean, you, you, anywhere you go, you will find one, one of one of the Machado brothers somewhere. They're all over, and uh, be sure and... Go look up on Netflix that uh, the episode of Walker, Texas Ranger. Really, uh, that was handle. a great time. That was fun. That was fun. All right. Thanks very uh, much, Jean-Jacques. Thank you. You're welcome.